Shooting video is very different from capturing still images, even if you're working with a DSLR. Let's go over some of the basic video settings and what they mean to get you shooting with confidence. Hi everyone, I'm Mia. If you're just starting to dabble in capturing video footage with a DSLR, I'm going to give you an overview of the settings and what they do so that you can make quick and informed choices to fit your shooting situation in the field. I'll illustrate these settings with two different cameras for this lesson. One is the higher-end Canon 70D, which is equipped with a state-of-the-art autofocus system for video. The other is the Canon Rebel SL1, which is more of a typical entry-level DSLR that's very easy to use. Let's start with resolution. You may already know that 1920 by 1080 is full high definition video. Most people have HD TVs in their homes and lots of online sites allow you to adjust the video settings to view in HD. On both the SL1 and on the 70D, the 1920 by 1080 resolution is offered at two frame rate options, 30 frames per second and 24 frames per second. If you're working on a documentary or a narrative project, you might opt for 24 frames per second. That's the speed that film is shot at for most motion pictures. 24 frames per second is a popular choice for shooting DSLR video because if you combine that frame rate with a fast lens that captures shallow depth of field, the resulting video will have a look that's similar to what you'll see on the big screen. If you don't want to shoot in the film style, then 30 frames per second is a good choice. It's more true to life. The next resolution size offered on both of these cameras is 1280 by 720. This is still considered HD, so why would you opt for a lower resolution? Well, sometimes it'll allow your media to go farther. On the 70D, dropping the resolution down to 720 will allow you to capture roughly 10 minutes more of video on a 16 gigabyte card. And you also get a 60 frame per second frame rate option on both cameras. Now, 60 frames per second is ideal for capturing action footage, especially if you intend to slow down that high action footage in post-production. The last resolution option is standard definition, which is 640 by 480 pixels. And this is what most older CRT TVs display. A different cameras may also have different compression rates and different formats available. For example, the 70D offers two different compression options, IPB and All I, or All Intra. I could go on a long explanation about iframes and predicted frames, but all you really need to know is that IPB footage is more compressed, creating smaller file sizes and allowing you to fit more footage on a media card. And All I is less compressed, allowing you more flexibility when it comes to editing frame by frame, and you can fit less footage on a card. A general guideline is that you can capture about 47 minutes of 1080 footage at 30 frames per second on a 32 gigabyte card in All I. That jumps up to 128 minutes with IPB. As quality settings go, cameras vary quite a bit by brand and model. Some Nikon DSLRs let you select normal and high quality bit rates, and this presents a similar choice between quality and conserving space on your card. Generally speaking, less compression means higher quality footage. That's easier to work with in post-production. But unless you're planning to do heavy post work or outputting for broadcast, it may not be necessary. Many DSLRs don't have a compression rate option, and it's hard to judge exactly just how much video footage you can fit on a card. If you're shooting video in any mode other than auto, making aperture and ISO adjustments are pretty similar to what you would do for still photography, but shutter speed is a little bit different. Since we're not freezing action, you'll want to pick a speed that creates the most realistic movement for any given frame rate. Generally, when shooting at 24 frames per second, you'll want your shutter speed to be 1 50th of a second and 1 60th of a second for 30 frame per second footage. If you have the capability to shoot 60 frames per second for high action footage, then set your shutter speed to 1 25th of a second. One function notorious for causing frustration when shooting video with a DSLR is autofocus. Mainly because DSLRs find focus much slower than video camcorders and can sometimes lose focus during a clip and start hunting for it again. Most DSLRs have several autofocus options, and for video, you'll almost always go with either a continuous AF or servo AF, 
which are exactly the same. When I used the SL1 to track a moving subject with autofocus, it took anywhere from a second and a half to almost two seconds to find the initial focus, and it didn't always lock in on my moving subject on the first try. However, after I got it focused on the right target, it never lost focus during a shot. My subject stayed sharp through the entire clip. To capture footage with a shallow depth of field, you'll need to switch to manual focus and ride the focus ring with your free hand to keep your subject sharp. Now the 70D sports a new dual pixel phase detection autofocusing system. It's the first of its kind. This system allows the 70D to focus much like a video camera does, quickly and very accurately. It picked up my moving subject almost immediately and locked in never losing focus. I would say this is by far the easiest DSLR to focus with on the market right now. The LCD touchscreen does instant touch focus, and the system is so accurate that you can actually rack focus during a shot, meaning you could begin recording with one subject in focus, then touch another part of the screen to change the focus while recording, and this AF system is so good that it'll find the focus instantly without hunting. And if you use an STM lens, the focus motor stays virtually silent so as not to interfere with your audio recording. For video purposes, this is a very sharp and accurate focusing system and one reason to justify the price of the camera itself. Well, speaking of audio, the built-in microphones on DSLRs leave a lot to be desired. So if you're using an external microphone, make sure that you're monitoring the audio with headphones. Lots of DSLRs will show you audio levels on the LCD and those can help you judge whether you're getting sound, but don't rely on them exclusively. It's impossible to tell what that sound actually is without headphones. It could be static in the mic or maybe wind noise. With some DSLRs, there's no headphone jack. In that case, you should really use an external recorder and slate your shots so that you can sync up your audio to your video in post. Just like with photography, it helps to understand the settings that you're working with when it comes to video. Understanding resolution, frame rates, compression, and focusing systems can really help you capture the best footage possible. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.